Now it's time for fire. <laughs> okay. Hi bakers, I'm Kai and today is all about cupcakes as you can see. And you might have heard that baking is both a science and an art. Well today is gonna be about the art portion of it. It's all about decorating. So decorating is really fun and I'll show you how to make all of these different cupcakes and more. So the first decorating technique I'll show you is totally beginner friendly and it also is a great technique to try if you don't have a lot of decorating equipment. All you need is a spoon. If you have an offset spatula or a scoop, that's a bonus. I'll show you how to do it even without this though. So we have here some Swiss buttercream and we have chocolate sour cream frosting. Both are delicious and great for frosting. You can find the recipes for these on our website. Link here. So let's dive in. I'm going to use a chocolate cupcake with chocolate frosting so that it'll be perfect for chocolate lovers. Just make sure that your frosting is nice and soft. Give it a mix in the mixer if you need to, but either scoop or just dollop a generous amount. And then you can use the back of the spoon to evenly spread it to the edges and then swirl it in the middle. Just kind of lift your spoon up from the center and a great way to make these rustic looking cupcakes have even more of a polished finish is to add a little bit of a garnish. I'm gonna just use a little bit of these natural sprinkles around the border and it looks totally fun. And I'll show you how to do something similar but with an offset spatula. If you have a scoop, super helpful. It might look like a lot to start but it's easier to scrape frosting off as you go. I'll use a flat offset to spread the frosting this time. Start in the center and just kind of move the frosting towards the outer edges of the cupcake. You can scrape off excess as you go. Once you've covered the cake entirely, go around the edges to just try to get a clean edge. And then I'll add some sprinkles. Not bad for low tech, right? So that's the first beginner technique, low tech, use the back of a spoon or a spatula to make a nice swirl and then cover up any mistakes with frostings. They'll look perfect. If you still feel like you're a beginner in the world of decorating, but you're ready to try using some equipment, this is the technique you'll want to try. So it does require pastry bags, but you can find them on our website and you can find disposable or reusable ones. And the tips that you should start with, if you don't have any other tips, you should start with a closed star tip and an open star tip. So we have a blog post that will tell you how to fill a pastry bag with the tip that you want. But once you're to this step, you wanna make sure you apply even pressure. And to do this classic swirl, you start at the outside edge and we'll move in a spiral motion starting from the outside, moving towards the top and at the end, stop applying pressure and lift your hand away and you'll get this kind of peaked swirl look. Just love how professional this looks and it's really easy, it totally is beginner friendly even if you've never used pastry bags, this is where you wanna start. And then I'll show you what this open star tip looks like. It has more ridges, get a little bit more texture. So same technique, start at the outside edge and then pull up in the center. Looks awesome. So once you've mastered the classic swirl and you've got your pastry bag, you should definitely try what we call the squiggle. It looks really elegant and fun and it's a little bit different. So you'll need what's called a petal tip or a rose tip. They're commonly found and I'm using the same Swiss buttercream frosting which is great for piping. Hold the cupcake at a little bit of an angle, about a 45 degrees so that you can see how the frosting is laying and orient the tip so that the bigger part, the wider part of the opening is on the bottom. Start at the top and go back and forth. It's just really fun looking. It looks like a ribbon. We're slowly moving into the more advanced techniques, but don't be intimidated. It's really pretty easy. It just takes a bit more planning and a little bit more time. So this is the flat topped cupcake approach. So we are going to start with our cupcakes. Our pastry bag is fitted with a open tip. So it has about three quarters of an inch opening. You can find these really easily. You can even just snip off the end of your pastry bag and not use a tip at all. So start with your cupcake and your open tip and you want to hold it at a 90 degree angle 
and you will start with your tip at the height that you want your finished flat top to be. So if you want about half an inch of frosting, start with your tip about half an inch above the cupcake. Squeeze with even pressure and it will kind of come out in this nice looking disc. You want to stop squeezing when there's about half an inch of naked cupcake around the border of the frosting. So now we will turn it upside down onto a piece of parchment and I'm going to gently press until the frosting is even with the edge of the cupcake. We're going to let them sit. I'm actually going to chill this whole sheet in the refrigerator for 15 minutes before we peel it off. So these cupcakes have been chilling for at least 15 minutes and now at this point, you can just peel the parchment off. There's not a lot of technique here. It should be fully set. And you have this beautiful flat topped cupcake that is the perfect canvas for decorating. I have some edible dried flower petals that I'll use to decorate some of these. And I also love rolling the edges of the cupcakes in sprinkles to get this fun look. So these are our flat topped cupcakes. I actually had a lot more fun than I thought. I was going through decorating them. And I'll show you two more techniques that are for the more advanced baker or more patient baker. <laughs> it's really all it is. The next technique I'm going to show you is great for bakers who love using color to decorate. We love using natural colors at King Arthur, so that's what I've used here today. I've separated my Swiss buttercream into three portions and added color to two of them. We went with a blue and this nice yellow, but use whatever colors you want, and then portion them evenly into small pastry bags. And they don't have any tips in them, they're closed. And I have a larger pastry bag that is fitted with whatever tip you want. My favorite tip is this closed large star tip, so that's what I have here. We're going to cut the tip off of these three. Not a large opening, but about three quarters of an inch. So we have our three bags that are all now cut open. I'm going to put all three of them into the larger bag. Try not to add too much pressure to these bags because they're open, so frosting will start coming out. Settle your three frosting bags into the one larger one. So before you start piping on your cupcakes, you want to pipe on parchment or piece of something because it might be a solid color at first. This is looking Pretty good, we're already getting some multicolored. So now that I've tested my pastry bag and I know all three colors are coming out, you can go ahead and pipe however you want on top of your cupcakes. You can use any of the other techniques that we've gone over. I like the classic swirl, so that's what I will be doing for these. It looks so fun. If you are more of an adventurous baker, you are going to love this decorating technique. We will be playing with fire. We're going to be bruleeing our marshmallow topping. So we're using Swiss meringue here, but you can, if you wanted to make it more beginner friendly, you can put marshmallows on top and brulee those instead of making your own topping. But I am going to show you how to pipe in this kind of beehive high hat pattern so that you get a gorgeous, nice amount of marshmallow on the top of your frosting. So we will be using the open tip. Again, it's the same one that we use for our flat topped cupcake. To create this look, you are going to do similar motion to the classic swirl, though you'll be applying more pressure and moving in a tighter spiral so that the frosting kind of grows upwards rather than just spreads out. And at the end, I'm gonna do a little flick of the wrist and that gives you that nice little point. So once you've piped all of your cupcakes with your meringue, you can brulee them. So I'm using our baker's torch and I love it because it's the perfect size for easy storing, it's handheld, it's not really intimidating like a giant blow torch. So turn it on and we're going to heat the frosting up. It's much better to start a little bit further away rather than get really close and then all of a sudden it turns too dark. So we're going to be moving it in a constant kind of circle so that one spot doesn't get too dark and then just moving on when it's the color that you like. It smells like a campfire in here. These look so beautiful. I love that you can see the texture of the piping and you can make some a little bit darker for those people who like more of that almost caramelized flavor, makes them a little bit lighter. 
and it's just a really fun, different technique that you don't usually see on top of cupcakes. So for our finale, I will show you how to combine some of the techniques that we've seen so far and make cupcakes that use a bunch of different kinds of tips. It's like a multi-technique approach and it makes really beautiful, stunning cupcakes that are fun to decorate. So the last decorating technique I'll show you might look really complicated, but it's not that difficult if you have a special tool called a coupler, which basically allows you to switch the tips on your pastry bag so that you don't need to have a lot of different bags. So really handy if you wanna just use one pastry bag. I'm going to use a couple different colors fitted with different tips. But you'll want to pick one that has a little bit of a larger tip and then a few smaller tips. And then we'll basically treat each cupcake top, again, like a blank canvas, and we'll do different designs. You don't need to follow any specific pattern here. This is where you can have your little arts and crafts moment and basically just do what you want. That's why I love this decorating method. One thing to keep in mind while you're trying this technique is to start with the largest tip. So I will pipe two rosettes, which is a fancy way of saying swirls with a star tip, maybe a little bit off center to begin. It's easiest to fill in with smaller tips after you have your biggest designs already on the cupcake. So I did three little swirls. Once you pipe the largest designs, move to your medium sized tips. Maybe I will move to the petal tip. And really, again, this is, you can't go wrong here. It's just whatever you would like to do. I'm gonna try to do some little leaf shaped squiggles. And then finally, it's nice to have a really small tip to do detailed work with to fill in any empty spots. So I'll just do little white dots. It can bring the design all together if you do it across all the colors. So even though these cupcakes might look really complicated, really this is just a great opportunity to use different tips, have some fun with it, you can't go wrong. Even if you just use one color, it looks really beautiful. So whether you are just starting out or you're a pro, try this, you can use whatever recipe you want. We have tons of cupcakes and frosting recipes on our website. Share your photos, they're totally Instagram worthy, so share them with us, tag us, and thanks so much for watching, and we'll be back next week with something new and exciting.